Stratamax is an interactive visual analysis tool for cancer subtype analysis. In this video, we demonstrate a subtype analysis of the Cancer Genome Atlas Clear Cell Renal Carcinoma Dataset using Collado Stratamax. We utilize genome-wide mRNA and microRNA expression profiles, copy number and mutation calls, as well as clinical parameters for over 400 patients. The data and software to reproduce this case study are available at Kaleido.org. Here we see an empty Stratamax view in Kaleido. The support views on the left provide information about datasets and selections. We begin our analysis by adding a stratification of mRNA clusters. To do this, we click the Add button, which reveals the query wizard. We choose to select a stratification from a list. This opens the lineup view at the bottom, which shows the matrix dataset and their associated stratifications. We can add or remove datasets interactively. We first choose a consensus non-negative matrix factorization clustering with two clusters, which reveals a preview of the data and the stratifications in the Stratamax view. Clicking other stratification updates the preview. Once we confirm a stratification, the preview mode terminates and the stratification is added to the Stratamax view. The stratification is shown in a column, which contains a header block, showing a summary of the data for all patients, and further blocks, where each block corresponds to a set of patients and their associated data. Clicking on the header selects the whole stratification. Clicking on a block selects the patients within the block. The selected patients are listed in the Selection Info view, and information about the dataset is shown in the Datasets Info view. To compare stratifications, we add patient clusters for microRNA data. We do so by activating the microRNA dataset in the lineup view and double clicking the stratification. In the Stratamax view, the two stratifications are connected by bands. The bands represent intersections between the patient groups in the two datasets. Wide ribbons indicate many shared patients of two blocks, while thin or absent ribbons indicate few or no shared patients. In the next step, we want to explore the effects of the mRNA stratification on patient survival. To do this, we add the days to death variable as a dependent column to the mRNA column To customize the layout, we can move columns around using drag and drop. Each mRNA block is associated with a kaplan meier plot that shows the survival for the patients in the connected block. Each block can be enlarged to show details. Here we see a detail of the kaplan meier plots, which shows that there is a difference in survival between the patients in the mRNA clusters. We continue our analysis by adding a categorical parameter, the tumor stages of the patients. We again use the query wizard and lineup to select the stratification. Then we want to see the influence of tumor stages on survival. We can see that the stage has a strong influence on survival and that mRNA cluster M1 has a large overlap with tumor stage 1. In the next step, we want to identify differentially expressed pathways to characterize mRNA clusters. First, we remove the columns that we no longer need and then use the query wizard to find pathways that are differentially expressed in mRNA cluster M4 compared to the other three clusters. Stratamax runs a gene set enrichment algorithm to identify differentially expressed pathways and ranks pathways by their p-value.
The ranking is displayed in the lineup view, along with general information about the pathways. We select the pathway and adjust its scale to make it fit onto the screen. To see differences between pathways more clearly, we adjust the color mapping. We preview multiple pathways until we find one that is interesting in the context of the data. For the ribosome pathway, we observe very high expression relative to the cohort mean in cluster M4. We can see the high expression clearly in the detail view. Stratamax makes it straightforward to integrate annotations and rankings computed with external tools into the analysis. Here we want to look at copy number changes of genes implicated in cancer. We load an external cancer gene classification for the copy number dataset using the group importer tool built into Coledo. The classification describes two classes of genes, oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. After the import, we see a new column in the lineup view. We then filter the list to only include tumor suppressor genes. Using the sorting feature of lineup, we can sort by various attributes. We sort by homozygous deletions. We identify VHL, a gene that is frequently deleted both homozygously and heterozygously. Next, we want to identify deletions of tumor suppressor genes in M3. We limit our search to genes with at least 10 patients who have a deletion. Then we use a query to find an overlap of the filtered genes with group M3. Kaleido calculates the similarity and displays the scores in lineup. CDKN2A deletions occur in roughly 50% of the patients in M3, more than in any other patient group. Our next analysis targets gene mutations that affect patient survival. We start by loading Q values generated by the MUTSIC tool developed at the Broad Institute to filter for genes that are significantly mutated in our patient cohort. We import only the column containing the Q values from the table. Next, we adjust the mapping of Q values to reflect our intention of identifying genes with a low Q value and filter genes with Q values of larger than 0.1. Then we limit the search to sets with at least 10 patients and query the genes for impact on patient survival using the log rank test score for survival. This results in a list of significantly mutated genes which are ranked by their impact on survival. We identify BAP1 mutations as having a strong impact on patient survival. We hope you enjoyed our tour of Kaleidos Stratamax. Thank you for watching our video.